Hey everybody, it's your boy, the Tata Meister here. Welcome back to the channel, and today, I get another movie review for you. So, because that's all I do these days. And I, I, okay, I did an album review, but... Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes! <sighs> Apes together are strong. I am. Um, so this is the fourth movie in the new reboot series of... Planet of the Apes movies, I think it's the, how many, five plus one plus four, tenth, it's the tenth movie overall, counting, if you count the first five, the, the remake, and the, yeah, the tenth Planet of the Apes movie overall, uh, but it's the fourth one in the reboot series, in this timeline of movies, so this takes place 300 years after the five, the last movie, War for the Planet of the Apes, it's not, it's new characters, it's got a new story, new director, new writer. Wes Ball directs this movie, and so you're probably wondering, what did I think of it? I thought it was very good. And I'm gonna get to the negatives later, but for the most part, it's very good. I'll say it's not as good as those last three, though. So if you're expecting something grand and epic like those last three were, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not really gonna get that here. <laughs> it does a good job, though. I'll admit, it does a good job. And I'm going to get to the positives here. So here's the positives. I'll admit the characters are great. Like Noah, um, Raka, and May. All really good. The villain's really good. Uh, Proximus Caesar. They do a good job with him. Uh, Noah's two friends. I forget their names. The two friends that are with him. They're pretty good. I, I forget their names because they're not in the movie that much. But uh, his mom's really good. Uh... I like the story. The story's pretty engaging for the most part. I mean, it's it's pretty enjoyable for the most part. I, I like the story. The writing has its good moments. I think the writing really... While the script isn't perfect, and I'll get to that in a minute, it's when the moments hit, the moments do hit. Like, there's some really epic, grand moments in this movie. Not as epic as some of the moments in the last three movies, but there's some really epic, grand moments. Yeah, when those moments hit, they hit hard, and they're really good. Uh, again, visually speaking, this is probably the best of the year. The only movie I see being visually better than this is Sonic 3. And even then, I don't even think Sonic 3 can do that, because this is... Again, the CGI and the visual effects artists need, deserve all the props in the world for this movie. Like, this is visually a treat, like, the, from the backgrounds, the environments, to the, the CGI, to the, to the mocap performances... Honestly, everything about visually is about King of Planet of the Apes is top notch. From the practical effects, just I mean, yeah, everything about this movie clicked visually. I, I don't think you're gonna have a complaint there. It's an it's a beauty to look at watching the movie. Like, yeah, it's beautiful. But again, direction wise, Westfall did a great job directing the movie. It, it it flowed well. It was really well executed for the most part. And I don't think it could have been executed any better. I mean, as far as execution goes, Westfall brought this script to the screen perfectly. I don't think Wes Ball could have done that part any better. And I don't think he's the issue. I guess this is where I transition to the negatives. So, here's the negatives. Um... I mean... Yeah, I don't know. The, the, the main problem is the writing in the story. Like, I'm gonna have to say that right off the bat. I had no problem with how this movie was made and directed. I think there was no way Wes Ball and the team could have made this movie any better than it was. But if I think the story just has a weird vibe to it. And you're either going to agree with some of the story choices or you're not going to agree with some of the story choices. Especially the ending. The ending really threw me off. We, even more so than John Wick 4. Because John Wick 4 well, had a weird ending. But this was even weirder than that. This just was like a big, kind of a middle finger in a sense. Like, I, I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that ending. You'll see what I mean when you see the movie. But, you're either going to like that ending or you're going mean, to, clearly they're setting up more movies. Like, they, they have a nine movie plan, so I guess they have like five more movies planned after this. I guess. I don't know how they're going to do five more movies. But the way they, they ended this movie, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. Yeah, I, that doesn't defeat the overall experience. The overall experience of the film is still really good. But I would have changed the ending a bit, make it make more sense. You know, because it just kind of, they kind of throw it in there last minute, and you're just like, oh my god. It's supposed to be an oh my god moment, and it didn't really work for me. 
Because there's a character in May, she's supposed to be special for talking. I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but... But yeah, I mean, it, there's just scenes in here that contradict each other. And there, I don't know. I want to get to spoilers, but... To, to, to put it in a non-spoiler way, there's just scenes that contradict each other, and there's inconsistencies in the script. Which... I wish we were in here. You know, I, I don't like... I, I hate inconsistencies and just weird moments in a story and a script. That are just like, why did you throw that in? Like, it, it served no purpose. <laughs> it's like, especially with Rocco. Like, I, me and C Moist Critical agreed on this. If you watch Moist Critical's review, uh, uh, Penguin Zero, if you go to his review, the Moist Meter, we agree on Rocco. Like, I'm not gonna spoil what happened to Rocco, but what the fuck? Like, what did they? Why did they do that? Like, I don't know. I just feel like his character could have been done better. And it's like he's the best character in the movie, but he barely has screen time. And the way they handled his character is stupid. I just don't get it. Like, why did they do that? It's just like, okay, I won't spoil what happens, but again, just be expecting some bullshit to happen. If I don't know, me personally, I just. Didn't vibe with some of the story choices here. I, I was kind of like, okay. <laughs> there's just inconsistencies. There's weird moments. The story kind of felt jaggedy at points. I, I, I guess it's just a hard task when you're following a movie like War for the Planet of the Apes. Especially the whole trilogy. How do you follow that up? And again, West Ball and Josh Freeman did a good job following it up. But it just... I don't know. I would have done more, per se, for this movie. It just kind of felt like... I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't defeat from the overall experience, again, but it's got fantastic visuals, good fights, a pretty engaging story for the most part, great characters. It doesn't defeat the positives I gave this movie, but again, like, I would have personally just changed the story a bit. Like, I would have added either more to it, changed it up a bit, or just refined it more, because... I don't know, like, it, there's just certain, again, it's mainly story choices and script things, you know, that's all I gotta say about the negatives. I don't give the props to any other other things, like, the rest of this movie is super well done. It's just that script. If that script was, like, a James Cameron script, or, like, a, a Rick Joffa, or a Rick Joffa Amanda Silver script, if Rick Joffa Amanda Silver wrote this, this might have been the best movie. I mean, if they had wrote it, then yeah, but Josh Freeman, I don't know, I feel like he kind of butchered the story a bit, and the script a bit. Doesn't defeat the direction, doesn't defeat everything else I said. I just would have personally liked a little more. It just, it just, it, it felt random at points, that's all. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, on the, on the negatives. Again, positively speaking though, again, great visuals, really well directed, good acting, great characters. Just, again, the story and the writing needed work, that's all I'm going to say. But overall, guys, I did enjoy this movie, and it's a great follow-up to War for the Planet of the Apes and the whole Caesar trilogy. I'm really excited to see what they do next. I hope it's a good... Especially with that ending, that trippy-ass ending they put at the end. I hope that they explain that in the next movie, because the hell was that? But okay, uh, I'm not going to spoil what happens, but again, go see the movie for yourself. I'm not trying to spoil it. I know most people have seen the movie already, but I, in case you haven't, I want you to go see it. So, anyway. Um... I'm going to give this movie a straight 7.7. .7. Yeah, it's a high 7. I was going to give it 8 out of 10, but now that I'm thinking about it, no, I can't really... 7.7, right, .7, .7, I can round it up to an 8. It's it's almost an 8. I The reason I don't give it an 8 is just because of the script. If the script was better, I would have given it an 8 or a high 8. It just... I don't know. That script really is the problem. I just don't know what the hell Josh Freiman was thinking with some of the choices here. I, I don't know. Some of the story and writing decisions needed work. I, I don't know. That's just me. But don't hate the way it was executed. Again, West Ball's not the problem. I just would have wanted some better writing. That's all. I already said that multiple times. <laughs> okay. So I guess that's it for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh... Thank you all for watching. It's Meister signing out.